welcome class this physics form 3 quantity of heat so we have some tutorials for you and i hope you will enjoy listening and trying to understand so the first question is distinguish between heat capacity and specific heat capacity distinguish between heat capacity and specific heat capacity heat capacity is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a body by one kelvin or one degree celsius while specific heat capacity is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a body by one kelvin or one degree celsius so note the difference in heat capacity we just say temperature of a body but in specific heat capacity you must say a unit mass a unit mass means one kilogram mass of that body heat capacity just for any material any body we don't talk about mass but in heat specific heat capacity you must be very specific as the name one kilogram or one unit mass of the body factors that could raise the boiling point of water to above 100 degrees celsius factors that would raise the boiling point of water to above 100 degrees celsius so the question is trying to test factors which determine the boiling point or which can raise or lower the boiling point so for you to raise when we are talking about raising you must addition of impurities to water you must add impurities also heating water under high pressure at high pressure the boiling point goes up water of mass 3 kg at a temperature of 90 degrees celsius is allowed to cool for 10 minutes the water of mass 3 kg at a temperature of 90 degrees celsius is allowed to cool for 10 minutes state factors that determine the final temperature of this water so the question is testing factors which control or determine the cooling of any material so the first one is surface area of water when the surface area is large enough you expect much heat to be lost and the second one nature of the surface of the container is it covered anything which can be on the surface can also determine the amount of heat to be lost define specific latent heat of fusion of a substance specific latent heat of fusion of a substance so this term specific you must introduce unit mass whenever you hear the term specific it is either per kilogram so you must talk of one unit mass one kilogram they mean the same thing so it is the quantity of heat required to melt to melt completely one kilogram of the substance at a constant temperature to melt completely one kilogram of a substance at a constant temperature so the term constant temperature is in bold very important and also one kilogram since it is a specific we have said it must be for one kilogram roman 2 it is now a numerical problem water of mass 200 gram at a temperature of 60 degrees celsius is put in a well lugged copper calorimeter of mass 80 gram a piece of ice at zero degrees celsius and mass 20 gram is placed in the calorimeter and the mixture stirred gently until all the ice melts then the final temperature is found to be T and it is measured the final temperature T of the mixture is then measured so you are required to determine the following the first question is the heat absorbed by the melting ice at 0 degrees Celsius Second one, the heat absorbed by the melted ice, which is now water, to rise to temperature T. The heat lost by the warm water and the calorimeter. 
the final temperature T of the mixture. And we're also given the following constant, specific latent heat of fusion of ice is 334,000 joules per kilogram. Remember, they're specific, so they're always stroke, kg, kg. Specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Specific heat capacity of copper is 900 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So how do you go about this problem? How do you go about this problem? Solution. The first part is heat absorbed by the melting ice at zero degrees Celsius. Heat absorbed by the melting ice at zero degrees Celsius. So you are being asked the latent, the heat absorbed by the melting ice, which is how the latent heat of fusion, latent heat of fusion. So Q is the latent heat of fusion, M is the mass, and LF is the specific latent heat of fusion, which was given as 334,000 joules per kilogram. So this is the formula, Q is equal to MLF. Whenever you are asked, melting ice at zero, at zero degrees Celsius, formula is Q is MLF. What was the mass of ice? The mass of ice was 20 gram. It was 20 gram. So you convert 20 gram into kg. What do you do? You take 20 gram over 1000 and you'll get 0 0.02 times LF which was given as 334,000. And you get the answer at 6,000 6, 680J, 6680 joules, 6680 joules, 6680 joules. Number two, the heat absorbed by the melted ice to rise to temperature T. The heat absorbed by the melted ice to rise to temperature T. The heat absorbed by the melted ice to rise to temperature T. So when you heat ice, it melts to water. So the, the same mass in solid equal to the same mass in liquid. So when ice was in solid, the mass was 20 gram. Now it has melted to water, the mass remains the same. So the mass is still 20 gram, which you convert into kg. So what is the formula? Whenever you are asked about the heat of liquids, Q equals to mc theta. Q equals to mc theta, where Q is the heat absorbed, m is the mass of this melted ice, c is the specific heat capacity of water. Remember, ice is just water in solid form, and theta is the change in temperature. So the ice melts from zero to final temperature T, which we are going to de determine. We still don't know what is the final temperature of the mixture. So mass of this melted ice Ice was 20 gram. So when, whether in solid or liquid, it is still the same same mass. So you get 0 0.02. Specific heat capacity of water was given as 4,200 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So we just put there. And the final temperature was T, which we don't know. But initial temperature of this melted ice, ice was at 0 degrees Celsius. So you just collect like terms, break, open the bracket, and you will end up with 84 T joules. 84 T joules. Number three, heat loss by the warm water and the calorimeter. Heat loss by the warm water and the calorimeter. Warm water loses heat to the ice. Calorimeter also loses heat to the ice. So you need to determine what is the amount of heat they lost, they lose to the ice. So heat loss by warm water, it is a liquid, mc theta. Whether it is a liquid or solid, the formula is mc theta. So mc theta, warm water. So what was the mass of water? It was 200 grams. Mass of water was 200 grams. So you convert 200 grams into kilogram we get 0 0.2. C is the specific heat capacity 
which we now know as 4200 and theta which is now the change in temperature warm water was losing it from 60 to temperature t which you don't know so what do you do you minus the highest temperature and the final temperature 60 minus t now that you don't know t you just leave it in equation form in terms of t then you go to calorimeter Heat loss by the calorimeter is also mc theta. Mass of calorimeter was given as 80 gram. Mass of calorimeter was given as 80 gram. So you convert 80 gram into kilogram. So you get 0 0.08 times C of calorimeter. Specific heat capacity of calorimeter was given as 900 joules per kilogram kelvin so you just pick and you come and replace c again temperature change it is same as home water from 60 to temperature t so you leave the equation in this format and lastly the final temperature of the mixture so you must know the principle of energy conservation heat gain equals to heat loss what gain heat? The ice and the melted ice. The ice and the melted ice or water. That melting ice, melted ice gain heat. And what lost heat? Calorimeter and the warm water. So you come and pick. You come and just pick the heat which was absorbed by the ice was 6680 joules. Melted ice was 84 joules so you add 66 80 and 84 these two materials gain heat then you come and replace under heat gain and heat loss you also go and pick heat loss by warm water and heat loss by calorimeter and you substitute the equation you solve collect like terms you get t is 48.23 degrees celsius so this was the final temperature 48.23 degrees Celsius. So I have some further questions for you which you need to read, revise, and then you will submit for marking. You just take the photo of your work and then you submit for marking. State the difference between evaporation and boiling, define latent vaporization, and why a drop of a drop of methylated spirit on the back of the hand feels cooler than drop of water at the same temperature so stay safe and be blessed stay safe and be blessed home